back to Ottawa Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour. On tonight's show, we're talking about how to raise happy children without losing yourself in the process. And what do you do when you have a new boss who also needs to be fed and changed several times a day and whose calls for attention cannot be redirected to voicemail no matter how much you would like that to happen? How do you carve out some time for yourself as a new parent? And how do you remind the boss that, hey, actually, sometimes you're the boss and there are some rules that are going to need to be enforced? Forest. Our two guests tonight will weigh in on some of those topics and much more. I'm so pleased to introduce to you, firstly, Emma Pierce Mogridge, who moved to Canada from the UK with her young family just over a year ago. Emma is the co-founder of a startup called Nurtured Life, and she's also a life coach, a trained child and adolescent counselor, and a specialist in behavior management. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. And Emma, you're actually uh, giving away a prize tonight. Tell us about that. Yes, we are. We're hoping to give away a wellness treatment to a mum or dad in need so with the value of between 100 and 120 dollars that's amazing so if you want a chance at winning this prize all you need to do is go to our Facebook page you have to like the link and comment below on the prize that you would like to win we'll do a draw at the end of the week and put you in touch with Emma if you are the winner I'd like to introduce our next guest to you, Tiffany Drummond, who is the owner of ProCare Family Center, a professor in early childhood education at Algonquin College, and a parenting consultant. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you so much for coming in. So as I mentioned to our guests in the last segment, I always like to start out by asking um, our guests about the journey and how they got here. So maybe let's, let's, uh, talk, let's hear from you, Emma, and tell us a little bit about how you got here. Um, well, when I was in the UK, I worked in a pupil referral unit, so it was mostly behavioural management. It was a full-time, kind of stressful job. I found I had far more patience with children than when I had my own. Um, I went on to maternity leave and became a stay-at-home mum. And then when we moved here, I started a new business. I'm a co-founder of Nurtured Life. So I went from suddenly being at home all the time, giving my daughter all of the attention she needs, to suddenly running a startup, which is a ridiculous amount of hours a day. Also, with having my daughter at home, so it's finding that That's insane balance. How old is your daughter? She's four. And you have a, another child on the way? And I have another one on the way. Amazing. You're going to have a busy life. I want to hear more about what Nurtured Life is all about mm -hmm. in a minute, but Tiffany tell, us, or, Tiffany, tell us a little bit about your journey. So I've always had a huge love for children, and um, pretty much from high school I would take care of kids. I had my babysitting certificate, then followed my passion into Algonquin College. Um, afterwards, I worked in a child care center, uh, s uh, center for different age groups and then decided to branch off and open up my own center with my business partner, Erin Choi. And uh, it's been going now for eight years, which is, cool. it's been a wonderful journey. I've learned a lot of lessons along the way. And I've also been uh, coaching parents and just being a part of the uh, community of early childhood education. Um, as well with Algonquin, I'm able to sort of help uh, mold and shape the future of the early childhood educators and all my staff who work for me or the majority of them were also my students so um, I'm just fascinated by children's minds and how they work and I just love being a part of their days. That's amazing and you're also giving a prize away tonight. I am so we'll be giving a family a free date night or afternoon care with us at ProCare so that's a value of around $50. That's wonderful that's I know cool. a lot of people who could really use yes. a date night. Now we have a <laughs> caller on the line Emily are you with us? Hi, yeah, I am. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Did you have a question for our guests? I did, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't like to admit this, but I was always that person that judged parents with toddlers who had tantrums in public. But now that I'm a mom to a three-year-old daughter, like, my worst nightmare has come true because she doesn't behave in public when she doesn't get her way, um, and it's getting really bad. And so I'm just, I'm just wondering if you have any advice on what kind of, like, disciplinary steps I can take um, to follow or to do so that, you know, this next time this happens, like, I can be prepared. And just kind of, like, to give more context as well, um, it doesn't really help that my husband is a bit, he, he's passive and he's very soft with the kids, and I feel like I'm trying to do all the disciplining, so then I look like the bad guy, and they always went to him for, um, for everything, and um, it's just not, it's just kind of a messy situation, so I'm just wondering if 
if you guys have any clarity or advice on this. I, I know it's a lot. <laughs> I've certainly seen this dynamic uh, play out. What do you think, Tiffany? So you're certainly not alone, and children are learning how to regulate their emotions. So for people who are judging moms and young kids, that's just completely unfair, because the child themselves aren't sure of really how to regulate that emotion. So what I would suggest um, would definitely be giving your child a lot of um, heads up that you are going to be leaving and going to the store. You can also create them their own little checklist of things that are, uh, are needed, and you can add visuals. So you can have a picture of an apple, a picture of banana, whatever it is that uh, needs to be picked up. So when you're out with your child, it's, where's the banana? Can you find the apple? Oh, look at you found the apple. Can you hold it for me? It's a distraction. And you want, it's a distraction. You want to make mm -hmm. it a fun experience for them so it's not that you're rushed and you're feeling like you have to get your groceries done because your child's going to feel that energy. So you want to go in there making it, it's going to be a learning experience. Um, also having some easy to grab toys to bring with you um, while they're sitting down, fidget toys, little books, or um, really anything like that that they enjoy can also That's be a great idea. distraction. Yeah. What's worked for you, Emma? Um, again, I had the checklist thing. So when I go shopping with my daughter, I used to send her to pick up things. So she'd write a list of, in her own doodles, of what <laughs> she would like to get from the shop. And then while we were shopping, she would pick those things out, put them in the basket. She might help me push the trolley it took half an hour, an hour longer than it mm -hmm. might have taken, but it was it was easier, it was stress-free. Now, was your husband on the same page with you? That helped a lot. So before we had our daughter, we'd kind of discussed sort of where we wanted to be, and there were times where sometimes I'd be more disciplined or he would be more disciplined. So it would be always coming together and trying to work out if he'd said no to something, I can't then say yes, so you can't go behind their back. Yeah. I might not agree, but then we'll discuss that later. We can't. Otherwise, it just confuses the child and they don't know where to go and then they go behind your back to the other person who they yeah. think will say yes. The softer parent. Yeah. Yes. Now, Tiffany and Emily's case, they obviously didn't have that conversation, so what can you do? Like, is it too late to uh, sort of sort out the good cop, bad cop? No, it's not too late. It's never too late. So it'd be a great idea when your child goes to bed, uh, talk to your husband and just mention, um, you know, we want to set up our child for success. So I can't only be the one setting you know the rules and being a disciplinarian we both need to take on that role so um it's it's equal right yeah. yeah does that answer your question yeah that's really helpful thanks for the support and the answer thank you for joining us thank you i, I want to go back to the conversation about mom identity and whether or not moms can have it all now Emma, you, you have a child, you mm -hmm. have another child on the way, you are the co-founder of a startup. Mm -hmm. How does it all fit in together? It's, it was a struggle at first because, as I say, I went from being essentially a housewife with my daughter, full-time mum, and then when I was a full-time mum, I felt guilt about the fact that I wasn't working and that I wasn't earning money. And although I was doing what I said I would do, which is spending all my time with my child, and now I am working full-time, and I feel guilt that I am not with my child and I'm not doing those things. And then you wonder about when the second one comes, what will be the difference there? Will they have the same interaction as the other one? But I found that it doesn't matter what you're doing, you essentially always blame yourself and it doesn't matter what scenario you're in, you will still feel guilt, these thoughts pop into your head. Sounds like you can't win. So it's just ignoring them. It's learning that they're gonna come into your head and you're doing the best you can and your child is happy and they're fed and they're going to school yeah. and you're happy and you taking a short amount of time to maybe go to work and they're occupied, that's okay, they're, they're still fine, they still know you love them, you're there. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if my phone goes off and I have something's wrong at work or something but I can leave it for 10 minutes it's still gonna be wrong in 10 minutes I can read my daughter a bedtime story and then I can go fix it it's, the world is not gonna come crashing to an end and it's me personally understanding that I don't have to drop everything as soon as someone needs me I can think about it my priority right now is my daughter or my priority right now is getting this assignment or mm -hmm. it's it's understanding that it's okay to and also by wait. doing that, you're allowing your child to have a little bit of that independence yeah. and to also learn how to play on their own. And that's something that's very mm. important too, yeah. right? You don't want your child needing you to keep them entertained all the time. You want them to be able to problem solve and use those yeah. skill sets. Or even to join in work with me. So she'll yes. sit with her pretend laptop. And so while I'm Amazing. typing something up, she will be creating her own spreadsheet of that's adorable. numbers. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Tiffany, what are some of the struggles that your clients come to you with? So it would be a lot of the discussion that we're having today. So it could be 
be behaviors, tantrums, um, going out into the public eye or even something along the lines of how do I sing to my child, how do I interact with my child when um, I'm, I don't know any of the kids songs and I don't know how to get animated because maybe their profession was a little bit more serious. Um, there's a whole variety of ways that I can help and work with parents. And I want to hear more about that, but we have a caller on the line. John, are you with us? Yes. Hi, John. Thanks so much for watching. Did you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm getting right through in the process of having my children start to go to school, and I'm a little concerned about the bullying, the stuff that takes mm -hmm. place in school, so I'm considering maybe homeschooling. The only problem is it kind of seems daunting to me. What do you think the positive and negatives are either one of those situations with? Hmm. Have you had any? Yes, I mean, I think there's a lot of positives to homeschooling. Um, there's a, a network on Facebook for um, children who are being homeschooled where you can wow. find a whole bunch of different documents and um, just workbooks and such that you can help your child. What's the Make, name of that group? Um, if you reach out to me on Facebook, I can definitely send it to you. Off the top of my head right now, I can't think about it. I think it's Ottawa Attachment Homeschooling. I'm, I'm hmm. not That's confident. That's helpful. Yeah. yeah. Have you had any experience with this? Um, when I sent my daughter to school, the first thing I was worried about is because kids can be mean, and Especially even at a young girls. age, yes. Yeah. And even now she comes home and says, so-and-so wouldn't play with me today, they're not my friend, and then the next day they are. But it's sort of also life lessons, yeah. so <laughs> she's learnt I'm trying to teach her to be confident because she can be quite shy. But not so, everyone's going to like you, and Exactly. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and if someone's not doing something that's nice or doesn't let you play, Tell them that's not very nice. Yeah, Express how words. you're feeling. Use your words, and then walk away and find someone else. You don't have to try and make this person like you. You can go and do something else, and you can tell them how you feel, and it's okay. Exactly. And if you do choose to homeschool, I would really recommend getting your child in sports or other extracurricular activities, so they are getting that socialization. Um, it is important for their development and their overall skill set is to learn how to problem solve and socialize and interact, and yeah. and also handle the bullies in the world. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, John? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great evening. Uh, tell us a little bit about ProCare. Um, who do you target? Who are your clients? What kinds of services do you offer? So ProCare, we're a licensed full day center. And Hold a um, picture of that up there. Oh, You're thank in you. uh, Hintonburg, right? Yes, we're yeah. on uh, Holland Avenue by Wellington. So it used to be a cute home, and then we added a huge addition to the backyard, um, which is now almost a 4,000 square foot center. Amazing. And we have children from 13 months all the way up to age seven. You see the yard um, there, lots of room yeah, to play. Yeah, nice yard, yeah. and we have, we've uh -huh. actually added to it. So there's like a mud kitchen in there now, and um, a lot of fun stuff I want to a mud the kitchen. Yes, it's so, <laughs> so much good. fun. They get nice and dirty, but hey, they're learning when they're getting dirty yeah. um, and uh, we do summer camps we offer March break uh, just day service we also have a French program on Saturdays with Un de Trois Petits Pas so it's French classes and La Chance Music School offers uh, music classes on Sundays we do workshops and seminars and our popular service right now is our date nights and our afternoon care so that allows parents to drop their children off with us and they can go home and watch movies or they can do errands groceries or tackle some job uh, work okay. that they have to catch up and we're on. just about to go to break but when we come back we'll talk more about behavioral strategies and work-life balance we'll be right back after the break My mother said we had to leave home. The communists were going to take my father away. If my parents were afraid, they didn't show us. But we would never forget our escape from Vietnam. We were lost. And what was your job in Vietnam? University professor. We had no home. Do you have any family in Canada? No, sir. Nobody wanted us. Welcome to Canada. Canada chose us. Canadians opened their borders, their homes, and their hearts to more than 100,000 refugees fleeing persecution after the Vietnam War. We were home. It was my daughter's birthday. She was blowing out the candles on her cake when we heard coming from the TV. So we stopped and listened, and it helped us get to safety. That's why when I think of I think of my daughter's birthday. 
because now she gets to keep having them. I'm author speaker Kathy Donovan. Join me for television that's good for your body, mind, spirit, and business. It's Refresh Your Passion here on Rogers TV. Celebrate Ottawa is a collection of stories for, by, and about the people, places, and rich history that make Ottawa such a vibrant place to call home. Tune in Sunday evenings at 7.30. Back to Auto Experts. I'm your host, Barbara Balfour, and we're talking about how to raise happy kids without losing your identity in the process. I'm so pleased to have special guests in the studio with us tonight, Emma Pierce Mowbridge and Tiffany Drummond. So before we went to break, we were talking a little bit about how it's okay, it's not a sign of failure to ask others for help. And, and Emma, you've, you've been on this motherhood journey for a few years now. What have you learned from parenting your first child that you're planning to apply to your second? It's that it is okay to ask for help and you do have this thing where you feel like you need to be superwoman, you have to handle it all, you have to know everything and you really don't and it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to ask for questions and there's so many support networks out there. It could be your friends, your family or centers like ProCorp. Um, and it could be so many things. Pro care is the one I yeah. meant. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's okay. And it's also a great segue to the startup that you co founded, Nurture yes. Life. So tell us a little bit about that. So, Nurture Life, we're trying to make wellness a priority, to make self care a priority. Because there's so many times where you're burnt out. You might not have mm -hmm. family and kids, but it might just be work in general. And half the time, you don't realize that you're going to burn out or until you've completely crashed and then it's too late. And there are so many times where you're trying to do everything at once and you don't sit back and think and things take longer and you're being busy and you're working hard but you're not actually getting things done or being proactive because mm -hmm. your mind's just not in it, you're, f you're burnt out completely. So we're trying to make it more obvious, a more mindful approach that it's okay to take some time out if you're feeling frazzled, if you just can't focus take some time out, take a deep breath, go read a book, do something yeah. that you enjoy, take your mind off of it all and then come back to it later. It will still be there mm. and you can just de-stress and approach it from a completely different angle. So how does the app work? Like you can bring um, like a massage therapist to your door? Um, so at the moment, yes, we have a website. So we cover as many wellness services that we can think of. We're always adding more because we always say, who are we to say what self-care means to you? It could be anything. So, so what are some examples? We have massage therapists, we have personal trainers, yoga teachers, um, we've just got reflexology, we do have a, um, a physiotherapist now, we have estheticians, it's so many different things. So is it kind of like an Uber for wellness? It is like an Uber for wellness, yes, so okay. you go online, you can book your service, book the time and date that you would like, and then the uh, service provider will come to you with everything in tow. So we've had some mums who have love to have the back-to-back -back massage so say the dad's got the child the mom's having the massage they then swap over and then they go to bed they don't have to leave the house yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's wonderful and you're actually giving something away tonight yes yeah, so we're giving one of those services away so between 100 to 120 so it could be a massage it could be a facial depends on what the winner would like that's wonderful so don't forget to comment and like on our facebook page and let us know that you're interested in winning the prize we'll do a draw at the end of the week and put you in touch if you are the winner. I see you have some props here for us, Tiffany. I do. Let's go through them. What have you brought for here? For so I brought here? this to kind of also just help with behavioral regulation. So if you have a child that may be nonverbal or is very young um, and they're trying to say that they want something but they don't have the words, they could turn into crying or screaming mm -hmm. or just not listening. So you want to figure out, like, is my child fed? Do they have water? Are their clothes clean or has their diaper been changed so you want to look at all those needs first and what then, age group are we talking uh, that would be like more toddler age but when they're not speaking fully yet and have full sentences but some children are nonverbal all the way up to school age it just depends on their their development so having the ring with some pictures some visuals so they could have food they might need a tissue you could be saying yes if you're asking them if they want something so it gives them um, almost like 
their words, but in a in a card setting. You could even add in photos of your family and animals and pets and their favorite things. So it's also like a security thing. So if they can't actually communicate, it uh, gives them a little bit more confidence. It seems like it would work do. really well. Like I remember being a toddler and struggling to communicate what it is that I wanted. Like yeah. I knew what I wanted, but I didn't have the words. Words, exactly. And that's where a lot of the frustration comes from. Yeah. So when you're thinking about behavior, you want to go A, B, C's. So the antecedent, the behavior, and the consequence. So what is the trigger? What's causing this behavior? What is the behavior you're wanting to change? And what are the consequences that you're going to set for that behavior? So you also don't want to have your consequences come too far after uh, the behavior has happened because children won't relate that mm -hmm. as, okay, now we're getting home and now I'm getting in trouble. Again, this is more for the younger ages to say that that's why I'm in trouble is from that behavior. So you want to like intervene right away. Mm -hmm. um, and ways that you can do that would be getting right down their level, eye-to-eye -eye interaction. Um, I don't call it time out, I like to call it a body break. So Interesting. if you're why? at home, it's just for them to regulate that emotion, for them to come away from that activity or whatever it is that you're doing with them. It sounds less like a punishment. It sounds less, exactly. And when they're on a body break, they don't have to sit with nothing. You can give them a fidget toy that they can sit down and uh, play with or something like this. You can have their little cue cards. Uh, you can have a photo album of all the pictures of your family. And so it's something that's still positive. But then when they are done crying and having their meltdown, then bring them back to the area you want them to clean or back to the table to eat, whatever it may be, so they understand that that behavior that I was doing was not acceptable. That's a real shift in, in looking at it because it, it goes from you know punishing the mm -hmm. child for bad behavior to you know, let's take a break and let's focus and when you're ready, you're going to come breath, back and join exactly. us and it happens to all of us. You're not shaming them. No. And then you always want to open your arms, give them big hugs and kisses, tell them that you're proud of them afterwards and then have, keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. So even though they're young, language is great for children to still understand. You could use songs, uh, especially with younger kids. Mm -hmm. They are more into rhythm and beat and the repetition of songs. So you can make up your own. It doesn't have to be um, a song that is on YouTube. You can just have your own fun one that you makeup. I make up a lot of daycare. Um, <laughs> what else have you got there? I also have these little shakers. They look like Kinder Surprise. Little Kinder yeah, Surprise. You can have them a bunch of colors. These are also great for like color sorting activities. Mm -hmm. You can play scavenger hunts with them and hide them around the house. Or if your child's having a meltdown again or you see it's about to start, start shaking and singing some <laughs> songs and it redirects their attention over to, yeah. what is that in your hand? Can I shake it with you? And you kind of just get in there quicker, mm -hmm. right? Um, I also have this here where this wouldn't be something you'd want to do when the child is in their full-blown tantrum or their meltdown. But when they've calmed down, you can show them different pictures. So how does this little boy feel right now? Oh, he's looking pretty happy. And oh no, what does she look like? Sick. So you're identifying these emotions to help the child kind of relate. They could point them out. Um, if they're feeling upset, you can take them out again. They may say, oh, I'm feeling this way. It's just more of a visual and it helps adults, parents, or teachers kind of understand a little bit more, are they mad, are they shy, are they sad, are they feeling sick, and they're not able to express that. What about the reason for why they're feeling that way? Um, if they're Is, feeling upset, the reason. Yeah. So that's where you would want to kind of take your visual observation. So if you're a parent, it, you'd want to see if it's consistent. What is the trigger? So is it, I'm not giving my child enough time before we are leaving the house or before it's time for bed? So this is where this would come into play. It's a wonderful timer. So visually, the child can see, oh, right, there's five minutes and number five. You're also getting into numeracy here. But eventually, the timer will go and it'll make a big ding. So the child knows, oh, OK, mommy gave me five minutes, daddy gave me five minutes. I could turn it myself, and then it will go off. And um, what is that for, like five minutes for what? Morning. So five minutes, okay. and we're going to get our pajamas on. Five okay. more minutes, and then we're going to brush our teeth. Okay. Um, half an hour, and then we go to bed. So you can keep putting the timer back. Um, even for classrooms, for teachers, you can use the timer for all the different stations you have set up. So that way, all the children are able to play and explore the different areas that I you want have. One. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's it's great. Um, kids like to also set their timers. Like, well, mommy, you have five minutes now to do this. So it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, role modeling that as well. Yeah. Um, these are sensory sensory jars. They're amazing. You could switch them out depending on what your kids' interests are. So do you um, make your own? We make our own at ProCare all the time. We even have workshops on how to make sensory jars or sensory bins for your for home. Interesting. So you can so switch out. It, it kind of looks like a lava lamp, that one. So there. this is, uh, <laughs> they're called aura beads. They're like water beads. 
kids love this. It's mm -hmm. like a science experiment. You would put a very tiny bee that's almost like a grain of salt into the water, a bunch of them, and then over the span of four hours, they grow, grow, grow. And if you feel them, it's a great sensory experience. It's like wet, like So do you tea. open the jar and put your hand in there? So for this, we like to keep the jar closed so they kind of shake it. They're trying to find what's inside their jar. But you can put that in a bin with, um, water or um, you can add scoop and funnels and uh, spoons whatever you would like so then they can actually put their hands in that mm -hmm. when you get to a jar like this it's easy for them to like spill it all over themselves so mm -hmm. usually we'd say keep it closed if you have a child that's great at getting into things you could duct tape it make sure yeah. it stays <laughs> extra tight yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. child proof it up a little more yeah. but our teachers um, at Procare are super creative with their sensory tables and even their jars and you can make it almost look like the galaxy you can have um, fossil finding in them. Can what you else? can you take those with you to Walmart? Absolutely, <laughs> you can, and it's something great that you could have in the car for them. Uh, bring it into the store. Any of these, um, any of these toys. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. It's eco friendly, so you're not having to use paper. Um, well, it's like an etch a sketch. Like an et yeah, exactly. Yeah. So even if your child doesn't know how to write or do anything yet, they enjoy pressing the button and yeah. embracing what you did. <laughs> it's interactive. It's like, can you do it again. <laughs> it's like it's really fun. Um, but also, if your child's older, you can can do you know triangle circle square mm -hmm. sorry it's really messy but you can ask them where's the triangle so you make it like a learning activity it'd be um, great for taking around the shop that could be their shopping list to take exactly off they, they could take it off and yeah. those are some really fantastic gadgets so where can you get most of these so you can get a lot of this from scholars choice there's a great supplier called all about kids out in Canatech Road it's um, mm -hmm. usually for schools but any family a parent can go there they're just not really aware of it and it's called all about kids all about kids on yeah. Canatech Road okay. yeah and then scholars choice is all over the city in different malls. Um, you can also order online. You, Value Village, St. Vincent de Paul, you could find some great resources that you can add into your sensory bin or even just for your dramatic play setup. Those are um, amazing. Yeah. Now we only have about a minute left before the end of our show. Emma, did you have any last thoughts for our guests? Any uh, thoughts on motherhood or the startup that you wanted to share? Um, just to let go of the guilt and to give yourself a break. You're doing a really good job. Your child is happy. They're functioning, you're doing your work or you're doing whatever's best and to stop beating yourself up. And what about what about identity? How do you know how much to save for yourself? I think it's when you know when you're getting stressed and when you know you've retrained, when you know you're not being yourself, that's when you need to be aware and take some time out and come that's back. That's your red flag. Mm -hmm. Where can we find Nurtured Life? So you can find Nurtured Life on www.nurturedlife.com. Perfect. And where can we find you? You can find uh, Procare, Procare Family Center, uh, .ca, or my coaching service is Tiffany D. Inspo. Um, Facebook or Instagram, Procare, and myself is on both of those. Amazing. And both of you ladies are giving away fantastic prizes mm -hmm. tonight. I wanted to remind you that if you want a shot at winning those, you need to go onto our Facebook page and like us and let us know what prize you would like to win. I want to thank you so much for your expertise and for coming on to join us tonight. Thank, thank you, you so very much, much for having us. Thank you. It was fun. We'll see you in the studio next week. Have a great evening.